People chanting MVP for him in Sacramento, not even in New York, on the road. You getting some road MVP chant. There's got to be a meeting. Hey, watch it with any kind of mentions. Just be careful. And that didn't happen. Yeah, I don't think it happened or else this would not have happened. The greatest jersey swap in history would not have happened. This is game seven series winning three-pointer Kyrie Irving we're talking about. To go left-handed, Lil Hezzy move left-handed, to win it at the buzzer in Dallas. I can't believe it happened. Anthony Edwards fucking oh my god! Oh my god. Tristan Collins. Oh my oh. god. Oh my god. Jason, I went and saw Dune Part yeah. 2 finally, and guess what? Wow. Fucking rules. It rules. It's so good. It's so good. It's great. It's going to be hard to go see a movie that's better than that one. It was just so exciting to watch on the big screen. If you've not seen it, just fast forward for like five minutes just to start this show because we're going to spoil a bunch of stuff. But man, when he starts riding that big old worm around, oh man, forget about it. That's so sick. It was so dope. Oh my God. It was so exciting to watch. The one guy, I I don't know his name, but the guy who was convinced that Timothy Chalamet was Jesus. Stilgar. Stilgar. Javier my Bardem. Fav- my favorite guy in the whole movie. I know his real name. I didn't know his uh, fake name. But, man, he was so funny. And he was just really funny. Great. Rebecca Ferguson, my second favorite in the movie. So great. Uh, Austin Butler, an incredible bad guy. Man, he goes all just an the way back. incredible bad. bad guy. I'll say this of Austin Butler. I think he's our best. I think he's our best voice guy right now. Like I, I think that, uh, you know, since say Tom Hardy, there hasn't been a guy <laughs> come in and do voices like Austin Butler and really make it a huge part of the character. And Austin Butler is a, is the voice guy right now. He's. You could tell me whatever you want about Austin Butler right now after having watching watched him in Dune 2, and I'm going to agree with you because he was – I just wanted to see as much of him as possible. He was so scary. He's very, Such a scary very – I love a scary bad guy. A great, great look. Just no eyebrows, no hair, no anything. Just bad with his face. It was fucking <laughs> great. Um, so after, after we watched it, De- Denis – how do you say his last name? Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. In my head, he's Dennis Villanueva, <laughs> just a Mexican dude. Every, every <laughs> person, it just gets filtered through my head. Dennis Villanueva. So I went and watched a bunch of Villanueva movies afterward because I was like, man, this guy rules. Because I started thinking, you know, of course he did Sicario, one of my favorite movies. He did Arrival, one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, Enemy, Prisoners. Like since he's sort of taken off, he's had some stuff. Uh, before then, Blade Runner 2049. I'm curious, what's what's on your Dennis Villanueva podium? Like an Olympic podium, you get three spots, gold, silver, bronze, and then maybe a looking in, uh, you know, just, just off the podium position. Uh, gold, I'm giving it to Dune parts one and two. Uh, the silver, I'm, I'm giving to Sicario, an incredible mm-hmm. movie. And the bronze, I'm going to give to the very, very strange enemy, which I Ooh, liked very much. Great and then pick. on the outside looking in, I'll put a rival. I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm very excited for Roadhouse. Jakey Gyllenhaal. I can't wait for the remake. I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I went and saw, um, he's also, they also work together on Prisoners. Did you ever see Prisoners? I did see Prisoners. Uh, Hugh Jackman and the creepy, the Riddler from Batman. The Batman movie? <laughs> yeah. Paul Dano. Paul, Paul Dano. Dano. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went and saw that. Yeah. We were at a, we were at, I was still teaching when that movie came out and we were supposed to be, me and the other science teachers, all, the entire science department, eighth grade science department, went to like a training and, and the exhibition downtown in downtown, downtown Houston. And we were there for, we were supposed to be there all day, but me and this guy, uh, his name is Mr. Giesler, one of my favorite people I've ever met. Just a slightly older than me teacher, but he had been in the game for a while, so he knew all the tricks and was just sort of always there, could answer every teaching question. We were hanging out. We were there for like 20 minutes, and I was like, Todd, Todd Giesler was his name. Todd, let's get (laughs) out of here. Let's go do something else because this is super boring. And we ended up at the movies watching Prisoners together just in the middle of the the day. (laughs) 
my top my my top three my my Dennis Villanueva podium. I think I'm putting Arrival in number one. I I, re, I recently rewatched it like two or three days ago. It's fucking perfect. Sicario two and Dune Dune one and two for for three. But again. As soon as I say that list, I'm already mad that it's not some other or like why did I not put Dune first or why did I not put Sicario first? It's so good. Even the movies that I didn't like love that much, like Blade Runner 2049, always look like oh, they look how so you pretty. dream about movies looking and are always yes. really interesting, even if I'm like, I didn't like that movie that much, but it was interesting. And they're always has just that, beautiful to look at. He has that trick that he does where he gives you the super far away Here's the whole entire scene all at once. The people, you're at, you're, the screen is 90 feet tall. Yeah. And he does, and a, and he like, does a shot where the people are eight inches tall. They're so far away. Oh, I love it. I love that guy. I hope he wins a bunch of awards off of this Dune 2. God, Dune 2 is off so good. Off this Dune? I hope he gets it's something so off this Dune. <laughs> it's so good. I hope he gets some stuff off this Dune. You want to start the show? Yeah, let's start it. From Wondering, I'm Shea Serrano. And I'm Jason Concepcion. And this is Six Trophies. Hello! I'm Jason Concepcion, and welcome to Six Trophies, a podcast series <laughs> hosted by myself and Shea Serrano, in which we comb through all the NBA news from the past week and then hand out six pop culture-themed trophies for six basketball-related activities. This episode... Kyrie with the left, Ant detonates. I go conspiracy theorist, do I? All that and more. <laughs> Let's hand out some trophies. Damn. New sound Shasta, this week. Shouts the New Lisa sound. Simpson. <laughs> she has the, the Lisa Simpson vibes of that fanfare. The royal fanfare this week, played by another listener, Devin Chin. C H E N sent it to me on uh, on Instagram as a Dropbox link. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, "Hey, check this out! I played the I played the song. I didn't know what instrument that was. I thought it was an accordion. We were talking about it in the group chat uh, amongst ourselves. It turns out it was a saxophone." I don't know. Sa- I don't know. It sounds like four saxophones at once. Yeah, he layered like it like a mega saxophone. He layered I it. I don't know. Somebody, if you're listening, record the Royal Fanfare and send it to us. If it's good, we'll play it. If it's not, we're gonna act like you don't exist. And <laughs> <laughs> we do two sets of trophies: the big trophies and the little trophies. The big trophies are first. These ones are the same every week. First up. The Denzel Washington and Training Day Trophy given out to whoever it is who had the best overall performance of the week. This week's winners, I hate to say it, Kyrie Irving and the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, I, mean, I can't believe they beat the Nuggets. I can't I, believe it happened. I cannot, as everyone has seen the shot by now, Kyrie's left-handed running hook. Some are calling it a push shot. I think it's like a hook shot. Left-handed running hook shot from 20 feet, all twined to beat the Denver Nuggets. A insane, like a ridiculous shot. It's ridiculous to make that shot. It's, it's so insane stupid. to make that shot. <laughs> it's so, it's the level of insane it is, is that Damian Lillard decided to tweet that Kyrie Irving was the most skilled motherfucker to have ever played basketball off of that one shot. That's how crazy the shot was what a great what a great game it was too it was a fun a game. game punch counter punch i was surprised at how effective the mavs were at attacking the nuggets inside with mm-hmm. with gafford uh, continuing his streak of high efficiency scoring on the inside um man uh, the mavs i don't know what their ceiling is but uh I don't want to play them in the playoffs. They are a dangerous squad. The Nuggets did the thing that you knew the Nuggets were going to do, where they 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 go on their run. They were they were losing the game. They were down double digits. They go on a seventeen to four run to take the lead, one hundred five, one hundred two, with twenty seven seconds left. You're like, it's over. This is I what the Nuggets do to teams. I thought it this was is over. what they do to teams. They just 
slowly, 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 and then now you're strangled and you're dead, and they're throwing your body in the river. <laughs> and I thought it, and I thought it was done. But then Luca comes down, hits a, a game tying three. Now it's one hundred five, one hundred five, with twenty five seconds to go. The Nuggets miss, and then Kyrie, Kyrie. You knew he you knew he wasn't going to be scared at the moment. This is game yeah, 7 sure. series winning three-pointer Kyrie Irving we're talking about. To go left-handed, little hezzy move left-handed to win it at the buzzer in Dallas when I don't most, I think most people were expecting the Nuggets were going to walk in there and like all right, this is the this is the team we expect to win the championship and this is the team we expect to lose in the second round of the playoffs. This is what the game should look like, and and they didn't. The, the the Nuggets didn't didn't finish it. The Mavs I, did. I think what surprised me the most is I can't remember the last time I saw in in a kind of late game clutch moment that the Nuggets didn't execute. Like you missed. You mentioned the missed shot. That was like a Jamal Murray mid range shot from the right side. That you're just like he's going to hit this. And they've been hitting it all season, and he and and it wasn't even like they didn't get the shot they wanted. Really, they did execute. He just missed. But it's a testament to how well the Nuggets have been playing down the stretch here. That I was just shocked that they missed that he missed that shot. Like legitimately, like whoa, I can't believe he didn't hit that. Um, and then, I mean, I've watched the the Kyrie shot like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. It's a, I want to hear it. I want to see all the angles. I, I like I like so when they do the thing with the music. Stupid. Ugh. And then I love the reaction of the entire team jumping on top of him. Him looking oh, at the God. hand. Luca yeah. being like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> when uh, the a couple of days before the game, I was uh, texting with uh, Arturo Torres who. He's the illustrator on the rap yearbook, basketball and other things, movies and other things, hip hop and other things. We've done a ton of stuff together. And he's a huge Dallas Mavericks fan. He lives in Dallas. He's from Dallas. And we were texting about, about the game. And he wrote, I'm going to, this is the, uh, the exact message he wrote. This is a, a diehard Dallas Mavericks fan in love with the Mavericks. And he wrote, I'm watching the Mavs versus Nuggets game tomorrow. I hope we win. We won't, but I hope we do. Even the Dallas Mavericks fans were surprised that they won this game. And it was exciting. I was a Dallas Mavericks fan for 25 seconds. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's go, Mavs. Let's go, Mavs. Before we move on, can I play, can I play, uh, can I play the bad guy? I want to be, I want to be the Austin Butler and do Good, be the bad guy. Bad I, guy. I, I, okay, I here, love, yes, be the bad guy, please. Here's the, here's, here's, here's what nobody's talking about. Here's what we need to be talking about. Go back and watch the replay, Jason. Go back and watch Kyrie hit the shot. And go watch everybody celebrate. And who's not? Who's the one player not in the mob around Kyrie Irving? Who is Tell it? Tell me. Tell me. Luca, spoiled baby Luca was mad he didn't get the game winning shot. He yeah. was mad about it. He doesn't join Kyrie. There's trouble in Dallas, Jason. There's trouble in Dallas. Okay. I'm calling it right now. We're get, he's, he wants Kyrie traded. I'm hearing he wants Kyrie traded. I heard that. Go too. watch the replay, I heard Jason. That, I heard that very, very recently. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few seconds ago, but I heard it very, very loudly. It's I happening. believe it as well. The Mavericks are falling apart. This is the worst thing that could this have happened the to the Mavericks. This is the end. Sorry. Next trophy. Lauren Hill. You might win some, but you just lost one trophy. <laughs> 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 Which is given out to the player team who had the worst performance of the week. This week's winner, the attention. This is a complicated winner. Attention for the Eastern Conference. Jason has gone full conspiracy theorist. Will you please, please explain what's going on here? Okay, How does the so, attention for Eastern Conference win this trophy? So I shared with you in confidence, you and Zuri, <laughs> I shared in confidence a conspiracy theory that I am working on that I believe is grounded in some amount of truth. And I've been soft launching it to people I trust to kind of stress test <laughs> whether it works or not. And uh, I guess now I have to be the bad guy and kind of like hard launch it on the podcast. So here's my conspiracy theory. I I'm out with the conspiracy theory that the NBA is biased towards big markets against small markets. I am in with my conspiracy theory that the NBA and its league broadcast partners are biased towards the Western Conference at the, at, to the detriment of the Eastern Conference. 
what evidence do you have? You might say, well, how about this? The East sucking for 20 years. How about the fact that the East sucked, has sucked f- since the end of the 90s? And yes, it's gotten a little bit better in recent years, but they're still the weaker sibling. How about the fact that uh, New Orleans is in the Why is New Orleans in the West? They put New Orleans in the West something Like even the Minnesota shouldn't be in the West. How about the fact that just geographically, how about Wemby to the Spurs, which we all is widely acknowledged. We all understand that that was a fraud, but but that was to the benefit of him and the Spurs. Like we get it. He he he's too important. But also, was that not a fraud? How about the fact that uh, the Boston Celtics, who should be like a, a, a a flagship marquee team on the level of the Lakers really are only on that level when mentioned in conjunction with the Lakers and certainly don't get like the kind of uh, what we all acknowledge is a soft and kind whistle and officiating judgments that happen <laughs> towards the Lakers. And then finally, it, then there's the fact that the NBA owned the the, uh, the Pelicans for a period of time, mm-hmm. which is like, what? Mm-hmm. Come on. And then And then finally this. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm on ESPN's NBA page right now. <laughs> Here are your, the top little, like, uh, little windows, I guess you'd say, of of the stories that they have. Better late than never, Bucks have unleashed the Dame Giannis pick and roll. Okay. One East. Uh, Anthony Edwards dunk. Stephen A talking about the Anthony Edwards dunk. NBA power rankings, uh, why Victor reigns supreme. And then the graphic is Chet, uh, Victor, and Derek Lively of the Mavs, all West guys. Uh, here's Stephen A. talking about the Pelicans with a picture of Zion. New York Knicks beat the Warriors last night in a <laughs> what, what I consider to be a statement win on the road. Jalen Brunson elevating to uh, he's so good superstar right now. heights he's right so now. Like he's right really now. taking the leap. Here's the here's the window. Warriors on the playoff bubble, the partnership that must keep thriving for the Warriors playoff hopes. It's a picture of Kaminga and Draymond. No mention that they that the that the ninth or tenth best team in the West got beat by the New York Knicks. Uh Russell's remarkable run, D'Angelo Russell. Uh then finally playoff picture <laughs> taking shape. Here's a picture of the Boston Celtics. So uh, Marcus Smart gets ejected while in street clothes. Here's a Grizzlies story. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, what is going on? The 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 play in the West play in will be broadcast from like the highest skyscraper in the country. The East play in will be over email. You're going to get emailed a link uh, to, to a Dropbox account to watch whatever the East play it is. And, and why is the same kind of push not there for the bottom bracket Eastern teams that there are for the bottom bracket West teams? And you'll say star power and you'll say uh, market size. Okay, then why don't we push Cleveland the way we push OKC? I think the fix is in. I think it's a fraud and I think the fraud goes all the way to the top. <laughs> This is Adam Silver's doing. <laughs> I guess. This is Adam Silver's doing. <laughs> and I could go on and on and on. There's other, you know, I think, like, I think how about the it. fact that the highest it. quality owners, the single entity owners, just like the Billy, the single billionaire with a lot of money, they put those, they shunt those owners towards like Clippers and like Timberwolves while the ownership groups with like 12 very rich dudes who aren't billionaires that don't get along, they put all those ownership groups in the East. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody not uh, watching, Jason is doing all of this while wearing a custom New York Knicks jersey. Just just a reminder. No picture of Jalen Brunson anywhere on the NBA, uh, the ESPN <laughs> NBA homepage. What's well, happening? You can, watch our, you can watch our show on Amazon Prime now. Isn't that crazy? That's We're great. the stars of a, of a TV show now, Jason. <laughs> Finally. It's us and Jack Reacher. We should fight Jack Reacher. I'll Two fuck, on one, we I'll should... fuck Jack Reacher up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big old man. That is it a is big, amazing. big he man. Down, he can't get down to where I am. That's the thing. It would, you versus Jack Reacher would be like in the rundown when The Rock fought Ernie Reyes Jr. <laughs> you got to be like swinging on vines and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a great movie 
Next trophy, the Dominic Toretto. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Trophy, <laughs> give, it, give it out, give it out to whoever it is who made a short term decision <laughs> with no regard for a future consequence. <laughs> this week's winner is my favorite thing that's ever happened in the NBA. <laughs> this week's winner, the jersey swap between Grady Dick and Anthony Black, and. I want to say, I want to say, as we get into this, so what happened is they do a jersey swap, they take a picture, and and Anthony Black is on the right, if you're looking at the picture, our left, um, and Grady's on the other side. And so their last, their last name say Black Dick is what it was, and everybody had like a great big laugh about this on the internet. Uh, the person, <laughs> I saw a thing, I don't know if this is exactly true, but... The Minnesota Timberwolves posted the picture. Everybody made fun it. of it. They deleted it. And then shortly thereafter, an ad went up that they're looking to hire a new social media person. I saw that. I don't know how, I I don't that know that how true person, this is. I hope that that person, listen, you, uh, I don't think it's that person's fault. This, again, I lay this at the feet of Adam Silver. You let the jersey swap happen. This was this is this was bound to happen at some point. <laughs> so my my theory my theory is they is Grady and Anthony planned this out. They thought 100%. it would be funny. Yes. They said let's do it because if you look at the game. Yeah. Anthony Anthony had uh, two points. He played three minutes. He played three minutes. There's no reason to do Not a jersey a swap. <laughs> they did, there's no reason. So they did this. They planned this. You can't if they fire if they actually fired. The Timberwolves social media person, or one of the you Timberwolves social that, media yeah. people, you can't do that. Don't do that. This reminded me of remember when the when the Mavericks and the Rockets played uh, in the playoffs, and the Rockets beat the Mavericks, and then the person who was running the Houston Rockets social media thing posted a, an emoji the of gun, a gun and a the horse gun head, and, the horse. <laughs> <laughs> and then like three days later, he went on the on from his own personal account and was like, "Hey, everybody, I got fired for doing that." Not cool. Like you gotta I, let let the jokes go. I just think uh, one. I because the caption that the Orlando Magic uh, social media team put under the Black Dick jersey swap picture, um, which featured the faces of Grady and Anthony smirking, trying not to crack up at what they had clearly uh, planned to do taking place, was class of twenty three. I think they were just like, oh, cool, two guys who were drafted. In the same year, and I think that they just blank, you know, here's the thing. The social media person is like the lowest rung on the ladder in any organization. And conversely, they're also the person with the most immediate access to the public. And what the companies, and that's teams, corporations, everyone are always looking for is like engagement, high volume, pump that stuff out, post, 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 post. And I think this person... Or this team of people just got in the groove and didn't really understand what they were seeing. And honestly, I, again, I put this on the managers. You gotta, if you have Grady Dick either on your team or coming to your building, playing your team, there's gotta be a meeting. Hey, watch it with any kind of Dick mentions. Just be careful. And that didn't happen. I don't think it happened or else this would not have happened. The greatest jersey swap in history would not have happened. Yeah, <laughs> I said Timberwolves. I uh, uh, that was a mistake. It was Orlando Magic, Magic, not Timberwolves. Jason, what could you? Who could you jersey swap with? You did. You <laughs> you had a great performance at this place. Yes. Who would you jersey swap with? Not like trying to make a joke of your last name, but like like I would do a jersey swap with the the. There's a, a lady who shows up in the wintertime who oh, carries nice. a, yeah, an ice chest around the H-E-B parking lot with the tamales. I would jersey swap with the tamale lady because I put up a great performance against those tamales every single year. She's so happy when she sees me coming. It's like in the office when they're all trying to get Kevin to buy uh, Girl Scout cookies <laughs> yeah. or candy or whatever. Like That's how she looks at me when I come walking uh, down the aisle. You know who I jersey swap? I jersey swap with my... Neighbor Lisa, who uh, Lisa is from Hong Kong, and she has a thriving garden with lots of fruit and stuff. And as you know, I have like fruit trees. I, as you know, I make jam. She's been 
giving, like throwing oranges and dragon fruit and all this crazy stuff like uh, it, over to me in the mornings. And I'm very thankful. And so I'm like, I'm going to pay, I'm going to uh, give Lisa a, a jar of jam. I give her this jar of jam. A week or two go by and she's passing me another parcel of oranges with the empty uh, jar. And I can't, I've been waiting for this moment. I say, Lisa, how is the jam? Long pause. <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. <laughs> it was okay. Not only that, but I have tried multiple times to give it her some okay. of this stuff, like the kumquat. She doesn't have a kumquat tree. Hard no. And when I've asked her why, she said, because my stuff, like, uh, it, she, basically, it's not high quality enough for her. You're Whatever she's doing gardener. in her. Yeah, she's just like <laughs> operating on a different level. So I would love to jersey swap with her. <laughs> she would not let that happen. <laughs> She would say, Here's, you could have my jersey. I do not want your jersey. I Give think, that. That's exactly what would happen. But I still would love to jersey swap with her. Oh, my goodness. Next trophy. Daniel Plainview. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my boy trophy, which is given out to whoever it is we're temporarily giving up on for the week. This week's winner, Whistles. Referee right. Whistles. That's we're giving right. up on him. The NBA is giving up on him. Everybody's giving up on him. No more whistles. No more fouls. Let them let them fight. Let this, them fight. Uh, 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 per Kevin Pelton, February and continuing to March have been the lowest level of foul calls ever in the history like of the it. game. Ever. Ever in the history of the game. And uh, I got to tell you, I like it too. I love what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. It's working <laughs> out. It. I, I think it's it's uh, it's raised the intensity level. Everybody's a little more testy because there's a lot of contact going on now, a lot, a this lot of contact Adam, going Adam on. Adam Silver's revenge <laughs> for All Star Weekend. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, still y'all are still you paying for it. <laughs> I'll just show you what happens. No more whistles. That's it. <laughs> um, apparently, this has been the result. Of multiple conversations, I you know I listened to uh, the, the the low post uh, today. It had a, a it had um, they had Monty McCutcheon on there and Joe Dumars, uh, Monty who's in charge of of the refereeing side, and Joe Dumars who's I forget his exact title, but he's you know involved in a, a lot of the day to day rules making and uh, competition committee stuff for the league and and making sure the rule book is followed. And they were very cagey about whether there was, this was a meet. They they really don't want to make it seem like there was some kind of plot to bring back defense more yeah, than it was yeah, an ongoing careful. conversation. Yeah, they're very, mm -hmm. very careful about it. Um, but it's clear that this was a directive. Uh, call it this way. Let uh, defenders do this, that, and the other. Watch this kind of foul call that seems more of like a baiting foul call from the offenses. And again... I like it. I, I like, like it. it. They brought everybody into the room. They showed them uh, old clips of Derek Harper guarding somebody on the perimeter. Harp. And they're like, this is okay. This is okay now. <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> what a great defender he was. Just always pushing somebody where they didn't want to go. I love uh, that Nick's guy. Nick's legend, Derek Harper. Nick's legend, Derek Harper. Um, every time we talk about that team, I think about Chris Herring's Nick's book, which is so good. Blood in, Blood the, garden. in the Garden. That's so when you good. could just you could just like hit a guy in the head. Nope. And you could continue and to fine. stay in the game. <laughs> you punch you punch you punch a guy during the second quarter and you're still in the game in the third quarter. It was incredible. It was incredible. Um I do I do like this. It does feel I was curious if if it's because of this or it's because we're headed toward the playoffs and now everything's starting to get a little more serious, probably some a combination of the I think so, of yeah. the two things, but it's perfect timing to come after the All Star Game when Adam Silver was so fed up and just he was mad so about pissed. about what he saw. I I think we were we were probably like ten points away, ten more points away in the game from him being like, you know what? Remember in Gladiator when they had the fucking tigers out on the court when the gladiators were fighting? We're gonna do that now also. <laughs> like he was so he was so mad. And now here we are, and it's working out great. This is gonna, this is going to be such a fun. You know why I like uh, it. You know why I like why, it why? so so much. Why do you like it? Because 
it benefits the New York Knicks, the number one uh, defensive <laughs> team in the league uh, over the last uh, recent stretch of games. They've held multiple teams to under 100. Uh, I think they've held more teams under 100 than the rest of the league combined. Very physical squad. Tom Thibodeau was there for those 90s Knicks teams. And... You know, I think Adam Silver finally got one right that benefited an Eastern <laughs> Conference team. Finally. <laughs> Next trophy. The Chief Keefe, that's that shit I don't like trophy, which is given to a player or a team. It does something we just don't like. We don't like it. I don't like it. This week's winner. I do not like it. Nobody likes it. OG Ananobi screaming in pain after going for the steal and re-injuring his elbow. Ugh. What a disaster. Yeah, I... So he, I, I don't know if he, you know, he's uh, OG has come back recently from uh, elbow surgery and they were playing against the Blazers and went to swipe for the ball. And you, it, it what would made it so alarming is like you heard it on the mic, like it got mm-hmm. captured by the arena yeah, mics. That's that, no, ah! good. no good. And then his shot looked off. He was later taken out of the game, but then said he was all right to go back in. And then since, uh, you know, Adrian Woj has announced that, um, you know, OG didn't play Monday night in the Knicks statement win over the uh, bottom of the barrel Golden State Warriors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which, we, need a, we need a glossary of the way Jason refers to, to teams because we have bottom of the barrel Warriors the, and middling Lakers. Those are the two that... that <laughs> Are always in my. <laughs> anytime somebody says those names, I expect those adjectives in front of it. <laughs> um, and he did not play. And uh, Woj has posted that OG is going to be out more than just Monday. The right elbow is flared up again. They needed to calm down. How long he's out is unclear, but it's certainly a concern. Tom Thibodeau said um, essentially there's a bunch of steps towards OG being cleared and whether or not he came back early, uh, he kind of dodged that question. But mm-hmm. I think that this is overall the fact that the medical team is sitting OG. I actually think it's a glass half full because if Tom Thibodeau is your coach, he played, mm-hmm. he played Deuce McBride and Josh Hart f- 48 full minutes last night. Yeah. Josh Hart played 48 yeah. minutes more than anybody else in the league this season. <laughs> I think that if Tom Tibbet is going to be your coach, he's going to coach his way. And so you're going to have to put guardrails on him from above. And I think that's what's happened mm-hmm. with OG. And hopefully uh, we can protect the guys uh, because you hate to see this. You hate to see it. He's an injury guy, and, and I hopefully he can come back healthy. I wonder if whenever one of, one of Tibbs' guys goes down, is that in the back of his head like, well, I'm going to get blamed for this again? Like, is that always there? It's got to be right. I mean, like ever since like, ever since Derek Rose, it's been like a a thing that people will it's say. A conversa- whenever. I mean, watching the game last night, it was you know, Bob Myers, uh, former uh, Warriors GM, was you know doing the play by play, doing the the color commentary, and they were talking about it the whole time. How many minutes? How many minutes? How many minutes is Tibbs going to take him out? It's going to be the as the Knicks become a team that people have to contend with. It's just always going to be a, it's always going to be a, a part of the conversation with Tibbs and the way he coaches. It just, it just is. If he's your coach, then he's going to do that, and have whoever his boss is needs to be like, hey, you got to change your oil. You got to do it. You just have to do it. And it's either that or fire him. And I think he's a very effective guy. He's got the team playing the way he wants, and so just keep the guardrails on him, because God, I do worry. It's hard not to worry. I feel like he watched Coach Carter. Remember in Coach <laughs> Carter when Sam Jackson's like, we're just going to run more than everybody else. Yeah. That way in the last two minutes of the game, they're tired and they're we're tired. not. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he did that, but the, he but his guys are the are the tired ones. Next trophy. The Step Brothers Catalina Wine Mixer Trophy, which is given out to the thing we're most excited about for the upcoming week. Oh, it's here. This week's winner. Playoff previews, Jason. The playoffs are in sight. They are in wait. sight. They are I in sight. Wait. Oh my goodness. Very excited about this. Uh let's do let's pick two let's do Clippers and Pelicans. Four and five in the West. 
as like our our case study here for why we're excited about the playoffs. What's going on with the Clippers and, and Pelicans? How are we feeling? I don't know that I've seen a team that more aptly fit the description of peaking too soon than the yeah. Los Angeles <laughs> the, the Clippers. Clippers. <laughs> They got. Looked, they snapped it into place. They, they look great. They looked. They look great. A couple of months ago, they looked <laughs> like elite. <laughs> Everything was going. They had every. You know, uh, Ty Lue had everybody cooking. James Harden had got it into place. Kawhi was looking like old Kawhi, and now Kawhi is struggling with injury. Harden's got a shoulder issue, and they just had a very, very alarming home loss to the mm-hmm. bedraggled Atlanta Hawks. Uh, <laughs> that, that makes you go like, does this team even like want to fight for playoff positioning? They're, they, uh, I think they lost the tiebreaker against the Pelicans, so the Pelicans will probably have home court against them, and they're currently, you know, like one back in the loss column f- uh, from the Clippers. Meanwhile, the Pelicans are killing it. Yeah, the Pelicans are really fun to watch right now. It's like they're they're a team we have not talked a ton about because there hasn't been a bunch to talk about. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hold on, hold on a second. What's good? Like you keep seeing their name in the in the NBA standings, and it's what's going on here? What's what? what what's and even going on like the watching them, it's interesting because like. The, the the synergy between B.I. and Zion, it's kind of like still not there, but they're so weird and effective be- anyway. Like Zion, Point Zion is, I mean, you talk about a guy who's just like intimidating physically. I don't think anybody wants to get in his way. And when he starts moving towards the basket, everybody's just like, ah, this is going to hurt. I'm just going to get out of here. <laughs> They're 15 and five in their last 20 games, which is like, you know, look out, look out for the Pelicans now. They're third in net rating, fifth in offensive rating, fifth in defensive rating. They're a good basketball team. And I think we were all sort of expecting them to be a little further down. We, I, 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 I certainly was. I was like, oh, this is a 10th seed, maybe. Not, not what they're doing, not what they're doing. And it's fun. Second in steals per game, seventh in deflections. Oh my goodness! I They're think playing basketball, Jason. I mean, I, I, I hate to say it because the Clippers did really look elite for a period of this season, but there would be nothing more Clipper-like than losing to the Pelicans in the first round after having <laughs> all their guys look really good for portions yeah. of this season. Yeah, I would like to see it. I would like to see it. (laughs) I would like to see it. Let's go Pelicans. I'm on the Pelican uh, bandwagon. Sign me up. You want to do the little trophies? All right. Little trophies. These ones change each week and are situation specific. They're for the smaller storylines that we want to mention, but don't need to get all the way into. My first little trophy, the Connor for real and pop star. (laughs) I'm a style boy for life. Trophy. Popstar is one of the funniest movies of the last 20 years. I'm so I don't, I, underrated. I don't understand why it wasn't a giant, huge, hangover, stepbrothers, super bad kind Every of thing. Every song I don't get is it. hilarious. Hilarious. I've been doing a Brooklyn Nine-Nine rewatch. Uh-huh. Andy Samberg is so fucking He's good. He's a very funny He's man. He's so charming and charismatic. Yeah. I think I tweeted about this the other night as I was watching one of the episodes where, where he has a a moment where he's not jokey jokey. He's like going to be serious for a second. I think we're going to get at some point the Andy Samberg, like punch drunk love kind of movie. And he's going to be incredible in it. Uncut gems kind of movie. He's going to be incredible in it. When he gets a drama role, I think he's going to be so frigging good. And I can't wait. Anyway, the Connor Farrell and pop star, I'm a style boy for life trophy to Jonathan Kaminga. For saying he wants to be a warrior for life. As soon, anytime somebody says for life, automatically, I'm a style boy, boy for, for life. life. <laughs> <laughs> great, great movie. My uh, first little trophy is the Major Tom, parentheses, Volig Lost Gelost. <laughs> 
four, three, two, one, earth below us, drifting, falling trophy to Jalen Brunson, who has taken the lead. He's really doing it. This is his play over the last- I don't know last... how you keep getting back to Jalen Brunson. <laughs> I, listen, he's been great for a while. Like, uh, very good last year, very good for most of the season. But, like, the way he's playing now with good defenses, focusing all their attention on him- Still going for multiple 40s, the fourth player uh, to go back-to-back 40s, Bernard King, Mello, and I forget the other one, and now him. And he's still scoring at a high level. His usage is up, but the efficiency remains the same. It's just like, this is what taking the leap looks like, and it's been a long time coming. It's exciting. What can I say? I'm, I what love, can you say? I love my guy, <laughs> and he doesn't have a little song like your guy does, but I'm going to mention him <laughs> regardless when it's you necessary, find, you find and the, it's you necessary find right Jaylen now song. because he's, got, he's, he's on a heater right now, powering the Knicks to uh, wins on the road, and it's beautiful to watch. I, w- I was very happy for him, the, the people chanting MVP for him in Sacramento. Not even in New York, on the road. You're getting some road MVP chance. My next little trophy. The Albert King. I just realized we're doing all music this week. It's all music little trophies. The Albert King. If it wasn't for bad luck, you know I wouldn't have no luck at all trophy. To the Detroit Pistons, who lost to the Miami Heat on a Bam at a bio three at the buzzer. <laughs> like, uh, when it's going bad, it's going bad. They They have nothing but bad luck. Right now, it finally looks like you're going to get the game to overtime. Wait a second. Bam at a bio, 25 feet out, buzzer beater, game. Ugh, I felt so bad for him. Not for Just Bam. Detroit, felt though, great they're for playing Bam. a little better. They're playing better. They are. They are. They're trying. My second little trophy is the Emperor Palpatine. Now witness the firepower of this fully <laughs> armed and operational battle station. Trophy two. That was a really good impression, Jason. I don't know which one of those was you <laughs> and which one was the actor. That was really good. <laughs> trophy to Anthony Edwards for fucking oh detonating my God. Oh my on God. Jason Collins. Oh, Whoa. my God. Oh, my God. Whoa. I made dunk this of the sound, year. Dunk of the year, dunk of the last few years. I made this sound when I saw it. I went, ay, 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 ay. I mean, he, <laughs> it, it looked like not only did he hurt his hand dunking. Dis, he dislocated his finger, he said it, afterward. It, it, but, but there was a moment there where it looked like Collins might have been concussed. Like this was the violence of the dunk. <laughs> it was so insane. This guy, Anthony Edwards, he's 23. He's not even in his physical peak yet. His dunk career dunk compilation is going to be jaw-dropping. Jaw-dropping. It's, it's already impressive. It's already... Uh, you you think what the first big one he had was probably that one in the bubble when he goes baseline and dunks and then just like rides down that guy's back. <laughs> like, like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> You watch the Kyrie shot. I watched this one just over and over, over and over, and, and I couldn't over believe. Again. I couldn't believe. I mean, you knew it. You know, it was something when they were showing it to him after the game. Like they turned yeah. one of the monitors <laughs> courtside around. I'm like, Anthony, you gotta watch this. <laughs> you gotta see what you did. <laughs> you gotta see this. <laughs> they were doing the Last Dance documentary right there on the court yeah. with it. <laughs> like, I mean, that's what that's what you just did something like. Whoa. <laughs> I like the noise that you made for when you saw it. Where he it he dunked you into fucking Speedy Gonzalez. That's what ah, you think. Like, I couldn't. <laughs> your I, like, your wow. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked oh, like a slam next. ball dunk. Like it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> my my last little trophy, the Kristen Wig. Don't make me sing trophy. <laughs> To DeMontis Sabonis for asking people, please don't mention Anthony Davis's 0 for 10 record against him, which was, you should mention this every single chance you get. That's what <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, don't mention the record. Don't. <laughs> don't. What? Did I beat him 10 times? Don't talk about that. It's a team game. I love it. My final little trophy is the Bill Withers 
lean on me <laughs> trophy <laughs> to D'Angelo Russell, the kind of friend you want to lean on for asking <laughs> in the post game after the Lakers win over the uh, the bedraggled <laughs> Atlanta Hawks for asking, was it not a charge of Jalen Johnson's clearly not a charge crazy <laughs> dunk on Austin Reeves where he scissored like over his head and sat on his shoulder so that Austin got a, a, a view of the of the regions. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But, I, but it was not. It was not anywhere close to a charge. But but that's the kind of support that you. I, I might, as far as I'm concerned, D'Angelo Russell, teammate of the year, for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's keeping track of the the team adjective list. Uh, bedraggled hawks. Go ahead and add that. <laughs> Go ahead and add that. Add that to there. We did it again, Jason. Another perfect it. episode. Oh. Another perfect episode. Oh, it's like Daniel Gafford. We just keep hitting. We, clo- <laughs> <laughs> we close every episode just by saying the names of underappreciated old basketball players with no context at all. While the theme music carries us out. Zuri, will you play the theme music, please? I'm Shay Serrano. That's Jason Concepcion. Producer Zuri in the shadows making the noises. See y'all next Wednesday. Frank Brikowski. Oh, the brick. Blazers legend, Kiki Vandeway. Kevin Duckworth. Oh, the duck. Wow. Uh, Connecticut legend, Charles Smith. Johnny Moore. Ooh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nick's legend, Monty Williams. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Jack Haley. Wow. Uh, Indiana Pacers legend, Herbert Williams. Herb Williams. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Artist Gilmore. Ooh. All Spurs. All Spurs this week. Uh, grocery store legend, John Stark. <laughs>